Welcome to part 3 of Working with Electronic Documents. This is the third in a series of four videos which has been prepared for LEAD, the Legal Education Division of the Law Society of South Africa. Part 1 was a very basic look at electronic document formats and the benefits and pitfalls of working with electronic documents. In part 2, we discussed encryption, what it is and why we can trust it and what it can be used for. In part 3, this video, we discuss what a certificate is and how the issuing of certificates is regulated by the ECT Act. In part two, we saw that secrets can be used to protect access to information. Only the person who knows the secret can open and read the document. People are very bad at choosing secrets such as keys and passwords. People choose short secrets to make it easy to remember. People choose meaningful secrets such as names and words which are easier to remember than random sequences of numbers or letters. The English language has only about 200,000 words that are in common use. If 1,000 secrets can be tried per second, all one-word English word-based secrets can be tried in just over three minutes. This is one of the reasons why access to sensitive information that is protected by a password or PIN is usually locked after only three unsuccessful attempts. An encryption key is secret information which can be used to lock and unlock the contents of a document. In part 2, we saw that the longer a key, the stronger it is against a brute force attack when an intruder tries to break in by guessing keys. Strong keys are too long to remember. We have already mentioned that people do not use good keys. Therefore, encryption keys are not chosen by users. Encryption keys are issued. Encryption keys are issued by a certification authority, or a CA. These are sometimes also called certification service providers. Encryption keys are issued packaged as something called a certificate. One of the next slides will explain what a certificate is and how an encryption key forms part of a certificate. Certification authorities are often private companies selling encryption keys in the form of certificates. Two examples of certification authorities are companies called DigiCert and Intrust. The ECT Act uses the name Certification Service Provider when referring to a company selling encryption keys in the form of digital certificates. A certification authority and a certification service provider are exactly the same thing. It is unclear why the ECT Act chooses to rather use the term Certification Service Provider. Here we have the definition of a certification service provider in the Act. Certification service provider means a person providing an authentication service in the form of a digital certificate. So, let's have a look at what a digital certificate is. Remember that it is a bad idea to let users choose and try to remember encryption keys. Therefore, keys are obtained, usually bought, from a certification authority. This is often a private company selling the encryption keys. But the company does not only sell the keys, they also sell trust by certifying that the key really belongs to a specific person. This is done through a face-to-face -face meeting with the person during which his identity is verified by checking his identity document. This is similar to the FICA process used by the banks and the RICA process used by the cell phone networks. After confirming the identity of the person, the certification authority issues a certificate. The certificate includes, among other things, an encryption key, an expiry date for the key, the name of the owner, and the name of the certification authority. This information is usually stored on a secure hardware device that looks similar to a USB memory stick. It is not just a standard memory stick, because it includes a chip which makes it impossible to copy information from the device. When one buys an encryption key from a certification authority, or a certification service provider, as it is called in the ECT Act, this key comes with extra information, such as the name of the owner and expiry date. The key, combined with this extra information, is called a certificate. The certificate is stored on a very secure USB device. When the owner wants to encrypt a document, or electronically sign a document, as we will see in Paul, the owner inserts the USB device into one of the USB slots of his computer, and with the right software on the computer, a document can be encrypted or signed by using the encryption key that is stored on the USB device. 
You have most certainly already used a certificate, maybe even without even being aware of this. Many websites are protected by certificates. All internet banking websites use certificates for protection. This slide shows the top left corner of a web browser after logging into the APSA internet banking website. Next to the APSA name in the address line, you will see a small symbol of a lock. The lock shows that this website is protected. Clicking on this lock symbol pops up a small window with details of the certificate that is used to protect access. It shows that the certificate was issued to the website absa.co.za and that it was issued by Digicert. It also shows the date period for which the certificate is valid. On this slide, we have a similar image for the FNB Internet Banking website. Again, it shows that the certificate was issued to FNB but in this case, it was issued by another certification authority called Entrust. Finally, it also shows the period for which the certificate is valid. Let's have another look at certification authorities or certification service providers as they are called in the ECT Act. The certification authority issues encryption keys in the form of certificates and in the process certifies the identity of the person to whom it was issued. It is possible to generate one's own certificate, but of course no one else will have any reason to trust such a self-issued certificate. There are commercial certification authorities from which one can buy a certificate. Those certificates are independently certified by the commercial certification authority, and anyone who trusts the certification authority can also trust the information associated with the certificate, such as the owner's name and the expiry date. However, in terms of the South African law, it is not left to the user to decide which commercial certification authority to trust. The ECT Act requires that only very specific certification authorities have legal status to issue certificates that will be binding under the South African law. For this purpose, the South African Accreditation Authority was formed. This accreditation authority accredits South African certification authorities. Only those certification authorities which are accredited by the South African Accreditation Authority can issue, issue certificates which have a legal status under South African law. The ECT Act spells out which criteria the South African Accreditation Authority must use when accrediting certification authorities. A lot of the security surrounding the issuing of certificates has to do with the use of the certificate to generate an advanced electronic signature. Advanced electronic signatures are discussed in part 4 of this video series. Let's read what the Act says in section 38. Section 38.1 The accreditation authority may not accredit authentication products or services unless the accreditation authority is satisfied that an electronic signature to which such an authentication product or service relate is uniquely linked to the user, is capable of identifying that user, is created using means that can be maintained under the sole control of that user and will be linked to the data or data message to which it relates in such a manner that any subsequent change of the data or data message is detectable, is based on the face-to-face -face identification of the user. This slide shows part of the homepage of the South African Accreditation Authority. It shows that this authority falls under the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services. If you want to buy a certificate, for example to be able to sign documents electronically in a way which will be accepted by South African courts, you have to buy the certificate from a certification authority which has been accredited by the South African Accreditation Authority. Luckily, this website makes this very easy because it includes a list of companies from which you can buy such a certificate. This slide shows the page on the South African Accreditation Authority website that lists the certification authorities from whom which a certificate can be bought that will be legally valid within South Africa. The list is not very long. It includes only two options. Right at the bottom, you will see the South African Post Office. The ECT Act states that the Post Office shall be an accredited certification authority. So, in reality, at the moment, there is only one private company which has been accredited to sell certificates. It is a company called Law Trust, with offices in the Highfeld Techno Park in Centurion in Gauteng. Obviously, this information is not static, and by the time you watch this video, it might have changed.
This was part three in the series of four videos called Working with Electronic Documents. Part one touched on the most basic concepts in working with electronic documents. In part two, we discussed encryption, how it works and why we can trust the security it provides. In part three, we explained what certificates are and what the role is of the South African Accreditation Authority. Make sure you also watch part four, which discusses how certificates can be used to add electronic signatures to electronic documents.